Hello everyone. This video uh, I'm going to title as unboxing my Sarb Seiko Sarb 033. Now, first and foremost, I just want to say happy holidays to everybody. It is December 26th, so the day after um, Christmas. And uh, yeah, I uh, received this gift from my amazing girlfriend who uh, um, gave me a watch that I have been eyeing for months now that I absolutely adore. Um, and that's the Seiko Sar, uh, Sarb, S-A-R-B, uh, 033. So let's get into it. This is the instruction booklet. Uh, the Sarb is a Japanese only model. So it has to be bought from Japan and shipped over to the US. It is not sold in the US. Um, and this instruction booklet basically just tells you about the movement, the capabilities of the actual watch, and blah, blah, blah. So appreciate it uh, that uh, the vendor sold this or brought, uh, had this in the watch box as it is. Uh, shows authenticity of the actual watch now let's delve into the actual watch there it is now my reasoning for wanting this watch to begin with uh well there there are a lot of reasons but uh the main reasoning was it's styling i find the watch to be aesthetically absolutely gorgeous in addition to the fact that um I love the movement in it, and um, that it, it's it's a sport watch that can also be used in a more formal, dressy setting, and that's that's what first attracted me to the watch. The more research I did about it, the more I grew to appreciate and enjoy the actual uh, thought of owning this piece. Um, it's regarded in many circles as a baby Grand Seiko due to its uh, retro styling, as well as the the impeccable build quality of the actual piece. Um, but first I'm going to talk about the actual movement inside this um, baby Seiko, a uh, Grand Seiko, a uh, baby Grand Seiko. <laughs> um, the 6R15 movement. Now, I own... Um, quite a few uh, Seiko automatics that have the newer Seiko 4R36 movement in it and um, it made me fall in love with not only that movement but really all automatic movements you know uh, that I deem to be of uh, superior quality um, and uh, the 6R15 movement uh, fell into that category for me um, for a multitude of reasons of which uh you know many many debates online have gone forth as to why the 6r15 movement is either the equal or you know, the superior to the eta 2824 blah 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 i'm not going to get into that you know the last thing i want are you know for people to say why you know i'm wrong or correct or anything like that it's my own personal opinion and i'll keep it to myself thank you very much anyhow um, the 6R15 movement is superior to the 4R36 movement in the sense that it has a greater power reserve as well as um, greater accuracy. Um, this is achieved through higher quality materials, mainly the alloy in the mainspring, which allows for a power reserve increase of almost 10 hours, uh, as opposed to... Um, you know what the 4R36 uh, movement has in addition to uh, its accuracy rating um, in the manual the accuracy rating for the 6R15 movement is plus or minus 15 to 25 seconds per day which is gr you know vastly greater than for the 4R36 movement the plus or minus I believe it's 30 to 45 seconds a day now my 30, uh, 4R36 movements um, all settled down to around plus or minus five to seven seconds a day at most. Um, this one, straight out of the box, the 6R15 movement in it, is at plus or minus one second a day. I mean, it's it's right on the nose. And, <laughs> I mean, I even fell asleep with it on my wrist. I was tossing and turning and nothing. This thing just kept on trucking 
you know, as if nothing happened, as if it was just in a winding case. It, it was remarkable. I've never experienced anything like that, like straight out of the box, just, you know, right there, right up there with uh, Swiss uh, high-end pieces. And, um, yeah, no, that's that's the reason why, or one of the reasons why I actually, you know, was looking forward to this watch was because of the the premium movement in the actual watch now it has a display case back of which you can actually see that the movement is more decorated than what the 4R36 movement in it is or the 4R36 movements in my other watches are uh, you see the Geneva striping on the rotor right there as well as on the uh, the brushed plates in the actual movement I don't know if you can see it here but the brushing of the plates is uh, let's see if I can get that focused the brushing of the plates is um, a far nicer quality than on the 4R36 movement uh, it's just it, it's just little cues like that that show you you know that um, it, it's of a higher build quality and therefore attributes to it's increased accuracy as well as power reserve and you know really just aesthetics as well um and uh with that i'm going to talk about the aesthetics of the actual timepiece um the display case back uh, is a screw down case back and it is with hard lex crystal which is uh, seiko's proprietary crystal um which is less scratch resist resistant than sapphire crystal but supposedly more um, shatterproof whether or not that's true I have yet to you know find out for personal experience but that's what they use now the front is a sapphire crystal which I know to be um, more um, well you know like uh, like I just said is more scratch resistant or rather yes more scratch resistant but you know possibly uh, less shatterproof than hard lex but due to the fact that it is more scratch resistant and used in higher end pieces it is of uh, higher value and therefore uh, attributes to the higher price you know generally speaking of most watches that have sapphire crystals but um it, it, i don't believe it has anti-reflective coating as you can you know clearly see right there uh but that's fine by me uh the legibility on this watch is actually the best i've ever known any watch to be that's including rolexes i i've never been able to see a watch as clearly uh the time as clearly as with this one and the reason why that is is the hands the hands extend directly or um the hand especially the minute and the second hand extends directly to the second markers let's see if i can the second and minute markers on the inside edge as you can see right there so it's easy to be able to tell exactly what minute and what second it is at that any given moment which helps you know uh, when you're setting the time there's a better shot of that which helps when setting the time particularly with the 6r15 movement that not only hand winds as you can hear but also hacks and what hacks means is that the second hand stops when the crown is pulled out to the second position. As you can see, the second hand has stopped. And now when I push the crown back in, you can see the second hand begins once again. So um, setting the time precisely is uh, uh, achievable and easily uh, done uh, with particularly this model due to its increased uh, legibility. Um, the actual dial of the watch is, it appears to be black, but in actuality it is a very dark brown that actually, when hit with a bright light, uh, actually seems to almost change color and, uh, you know, show you, uh, that it, it changes, you know, varying degrees of brown, uh, which I find to be absolutely beautiful and once again, adds to the aesthetic um the pleasing aesthetic of the watch and shows you that the different uh the build quality of what was actually put into this watch um the case is absolutely gorgeous 
uh, you see the different brushing uh, or rather the the brushing right here on the top with the ridges and right next to the polished side of the case the line in between the two polished areas I mean it's just it's really really high-end stuff here the embossed crown with the Seiko S I mean this is the reason why it's called a baby Grand Seiko is because of these aesthetic cues that you just do not see on watches in this price point it's just remarkable the kind of detail that and the kind of workmanship that was put into this actual you know kind of thing now the bracelet is I think fantastic it's in the oyster style and it is just brushed beautifully as you might be able to see here the video almost looks blurry because of how well it's brushed that's that's the kind of quality of their brushing technique now the side of the the links which are solid links by the way are polished now if I can get close enough you'll be able to see that the polishing extends to just the, the top lip of the the link and then it begins to go brushed like half a centimeter in there you there you see it it's remarkable like the, the little small stuff like that it just it really shows you that they put in the effort the clasp is a fold over, fold over clasp with dual button release all right it doesn't have a fold over it doesn't have a fold over security clasp but you know wearing the watch even in my sleep i have not yet you know found it to open on accident all this is stainless steel sawed links and the one thing that I truly love about this bracelet that I have yet to find in a Seiko uh, previous to this model, um, other than in obviously, you know, divers, is solid end links. I love solid end links, you know, because for those who have had Seiko 5s and, you know, Seikos with, you know, without solid end links, you will know all too well that the end links pop off because... You know, the actual, the pins are, you know, not secured in there. So having the solid end links, you know, for me just shows the actual quality of the timepiece, the bracelet and everything all put together that they decided that they were only going to have the best of the best. Okay. And now I'm going to show you, um, you know, like uh, setting the date. As you can see, the complication on here is a date window. All right. And uh, then that'll be that. All right. So what I do is I take it out to first position. All right. Just like so. And I rotate it counterclockwise, which moves the date forward. So what you do is you set the date for one day, um, the day before whatever day it is today. So today's the 26th, so I'm gonna set the day for the 25th. This is true of all automatics, okay? All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for the second hand to come around to the 12 o'clock position. All right, that way I can try to make this as precise as possible, which is another, you know, fantastic thing about the, you know, the hacking feature. There we go. And then simply run the time forward. And then we can see when the date actually changes. If it's close to, you know, midnight or what have you. The date's beginning to change at around 11 and switches over to 26. Uh, at about 11.56. All right. So this is 1, 2, 3 a.m. The time right now is 11.30, soon to be 11.31. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it 11.31. And as you can see, I can put it almost exactly, if not exactly, on the 31 marker. And once it, you know comes over 
to be 1131, I can simply do that and it's set perfectly. And that's that. And that's the beauty of, you know, not only the legibility, but the, um, the hacking feature, you know, being able to set the time most precisely. And that's why I love this movement so much and this watch. Now I'm going to put it on the wrist and show everybody. And there it is. It's a bit smaller than most of my timepieces, but I actually appreciate that. It it um it feels more understated. Now I put this watch in the same category as say a Rolex uh Expedition 1 or a Rolex uh Air King. That's that's the kind of category I put this watch in. You know, um taking into account the movement, the the build quality, the bracelet, everything. I mean, the dial, everything is just absolutely of the mo most high quality, I find. And uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like and or comment on the bottom. And uh, happy holidays, everybody, and have a happy new year.